I'm doing great. It is a pleasure to speak to you. I am a huge fan of the show. I am so excited that this got made. This is like every episode just gets more enjoyable. And I love, I do, I love your role. I love all of the girls. Can you just start off with how did this role find you? Oh, man. I mean, that is a loaded question. <laughs> I, well, for most actors, we have to audition, right? Right. So I auditioned for it. But in um, character choices and really sort of diving into whoever this person is, like, I know so many breeds in my life. I know a lot of women who work long days, who try to keep family together, who, you know, um, probably um, are so tired that they just don't have time to think and put time into a relationship like they should be, and, you know, who just want to, like, find themselves again and be in love again and hang out with their friends. And so, yeah, I mean, from high school to college, to my comedy life, to my, you know, civilian life, I know not just women, just a lot of people who find the struggle and the balance of just being everything for everyone, but they really have to be present for themselves. Right, right. Now, also, your role is, like, again, it's so relatable to everyone, and I don't feel that, it's kind of weird, the relationship that you have, I don't feel that there's a villain. I feel that things happen and it's unfortunate can you talk a little bit about how you was able to tackle this role from like a psychological level of a woman whose husband has been you know has betrayed her and in such a grimy fashion because it's like it's in the school i know that's what happens when you don't get out much right <laughs> i mean that's the thing. This is the difference between cheating in your 20s versus cheating in your 40s when you have put the time, you know, to have a life with somebody. It's like you can't just throw it away. What happens? You know, um, good people do bad things sometimes. Um, I think we're all sort of like, you know, capable of making mistakes and stuff like that. And so... That is such, and, and that's to Tracy Oliver's credit, you know, where she realizes that everything isn't so black and white in a relationship and in marriage, especially when you have the life together with kids, and, you know, like, can you work on it? And so, yeah, I mean, Gary isn't a bad guy. Right. They are having a bad moment in their marriage. And, you know, I'm so glad not to give too much away, but whatever, it's streaming, get your life, <laughs> that they find they find their way through it, that they can work through it. Because, you know, to fall in love with your partner is really to fall in love with yourself. Right. Now, you're a natural comedian. Anything, you just have a way of just making it effortlessly. And the show is very funny. Was you able to add a bit of your own personality and humor to the situations and kind of, like, change how the script is influenced? Of course. That's why they hired me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like... Um, you know, I, I feel like it was a really, like, crazy reference. Like, no one's going to hire Jack Nicholson unless they want Jack Nicholson. But that's sort of what it is, too, right? Like, right. not that I was there to be the comic relief, but, you know, I am sort of like Bed Midler's character right. in First Life Club. So, you know, like, the overwhelmed, fast-talking, husband just cheated, can we still get back together? I don't know. Um, you know, mom. So, um, yeah, I found it really easy and natural to be brave. You know, I love when Tracy and the directors, we had all female directors, when they just, like, gave me license to say things how I would say them and, you know, figure out, you know, how to navigate female friendships, you know. Because right. um, there are moments where, like, we improv making fun of each other or just, like, liking what someone else is wearing because that's what girlfriends do, you know? Like, yeah, obviously we're there to serve the story and get to the next episode, but, you know, there's a lot of chit-chatter, like, hey, girl, hey, and so I'm so glad that they let us, you know, find room to breathe and really become friends. And I, you know what? I really did become good friends with Jill and Ryan, 
And whatever happens with the show, uh, like, my most favorite part about the show is meeting them. Right. So the show, again, it's funny. And the, I think it was, like, around episode four or so where there is the, the gathering of the clothes, where you have to go and retrieve the clothes. And Jill Scott is just a mess, and everyone else has their roles to play, and you're, you're hilarious in it. Um, can you talk a little bit about the chemistry between you and the girls? Because everything, again, seems so natural. Like, it just it seems like something that this would come out of everyone's mouths. Was there any kind of hanging out beforehand, a lot of time spent in rehearsal? No, I mean, we were just, we were on a very tight schedule because we were originally supposed to premiere on the Paramount Network. And so I think we started filming in September a year ago, and then we had a turnaround 10 episodes, which ended up being nine for a January premiere date. So we had no time. We were just like, you good? We good. Let's go. <laughs> and then they just started rolling. And I think, you know, out of all that chaos and working 10 to 16 hour shoot days, you know, you definitely go through it with someone. It's sort of like you, everyone's going to grad school together or some sort of summer camp, and then you come out stronger on the other side or you never talk to each other again. And thank God, you know, we still talk to each other. I have a text chain with everybody. Well, everybody, meaning Jill and Ryan, and I call it sister wives because they really do feel like my sister wife. <laughs> now, working on the show, do, does that kind of change your aspect of how you view love and relationships now? How I what relationships? How you view love and relationships. Um, not really. You know, I was, my parents been married for 52 years. A lot of men in my family have cheated. I've seen all different types of relationships and even friendships. So if anything, I was like, oh yeah, I know a person like that. Oh yeah, I know a person like that. Because Ryan was like, how is this woman who's so strong and smart and fearless, her character, married to somebody and has never had an orgasm. I'm like, it happens all the time. You know, when you get back to the whole checking off the boxes, you figure out that this is more important than the other thing. Especially when you're putting yourself before everybody. That's more important. You know, every, get having everyone fed is more important than me eating. And, like, that's what it comes down to. And so, yeah, I mean, for me, I was like, this is really spot on in a lot of different ways. You know, like, right. even fantasizing at college crush as the one that got away is like you know the grass is always greener when you think you're standing in shit <laughs> makes sense to me absolutely now also i was just wondering when it came to filming was there any type of moment either in a scene or just with the girls that just stood out the most that stood out the most oh man there's so many I don't even know where to start. I mean, the heist episode was really fun because that just felt like we were in like in a. Um, but also the first episode, the pilot episode, where we're in that beautiful penthouse in New York, felt so sexy in the city. And then the white party, obviously, like when we were all looking at each other, we're like, oh my god, we all have white on. We don't have stains on it. We are amazing. I mean, there's just so many moments. Also, it was really tough to shoot the fight scene. Right. With a, I think it was episode eight when we argue, but because we all liked each other so much. But once we started having fun, where where we're just like, I guess if we yell at each other, this is how it's gonna go. Right. I mean, also the birthday party. I'm sorry. Now I'm just going down a laundry list. I'm too sorry you asked me this question, but. And I'm like, and then another thing. It's a it's a scene that wasn't even used. Just kidding. <laughs> but um, the birthday party that I had for my TV kids, and I do I have a makeover. I just remember feeling like um really uncomfortable because my surrogate was pregnant with my twins at the time, and being around so many kids was sort of like a trigger for me. Where I was just like, I don't know if I'm actually going to be a parent. And I have to say, Ryan and Jill were amazing, and they put their hands on me and, like, prayed around me, and they were just like, you got this, you can do this, you're strong, you're amazing, you know, the universe is on your side. And there's just moments like that where they just lifted me up, and I was just like, how could I not want to do my best on this show? 
right. when everybody is lifting me up. It was like pretty damn special. Uh-huh. And what advice would you give Bree? What advice would I give Bree to relax, chill, girl, take a day off? Ooh. Take and, a day off. Right. Now, also, last question I was wondering, what would you say would be Bree's perfect day? Bree, perfect day? Oh, my God, what a great question. She'd wake up, there'd be toilet paper everywhere, so she wouldn't have to, like, figure out how to find it. Um, Gary would be making breakfast for the kids, and their hair would be combed, and their school bags would be packed. And then she'd go and get a massage and a pedicure. And then she'd go into surgery, and it would go, it would go really well, and then she'd have a date night. That's what I think. That's a nice full day, and also relaxing. What's that? I said that's a nice full day and also very relaxing. Yes. It has all the things. Yes, I like that. Thank you so much for speaking with me. I look forward to season two. Oh, my God, me too. (laughs) Thank you. All right, have a great week. Thank you, you too.